Hi, thank you for joining me today. I'm Amanda from Easy English Online. Today I have a great new video for you on the passive voice. This topic is the top of my request list. Lots of my students ask me about the passive voice, so finally I've done a lesson on this for you. As always, to accompany the video, I prepared some notes for you to download. I will explain how you can download them at the end of the video. So for now, just sit back and enjoy the lesson. I also just want to quickly tell you about an exciting new video series, which I will be releasing sh shortly. It's an eight week mini course on the eight parts of speech. It's completely free and you don't want to miss it. So if you haven't already, click that subscribe button below so that you get notified when it's released. Right, back to the passive voice. You might ask, what's the point of the passive voice? Is it important? Yes, of course it's important. So in this video, you're going to learn what the passive voice looks like, why it's useful to know it, and then we'll also practice using the passive voice with some examples. So the passive voice is often used in day-to-day -day life by native English speakers. It's a mistake to think that the passive voice is only used in a formal context. It's also used informally, quite a lot too. So why do we use the passive voice? Sometimes we use the passive voice to emphasize the action. If we don't emphasize the person responsible for doing the action, the action itself becomes more important in the reader's mind. For example, English is spoken all over the world. The windows had been broken. Here, the action is more important. Maybe you don't want to say who or what did something or did the action. Maybe you're trying to avoid responsibility or blame for something that you did. The passive voice can create a sense of anonymity. When we don't know who did an action, we tend to use the passive voice because it allows us to leave out the subject. This comes in very useful when we don't want to reveal just yet who the guilty party is. It can create a sense of mystery. Or maybe you just don't want to get your friend into trouble. Or maybe you simply don't know who did the action. Now, if the active voice sounds more conversational, then the passive voice can sometimes sound more formal. You then tend to perceive this formality as more professional, and it can therefore sound more like you know what you're talking about. The passive voice is used to show interest in the person or object that experiences an action rather than a person or object that performs the action. In other words, the most important thing or person becomes the subject of the sentence. So let's look at another example. The parcel was delivered. The parcel was delivered. The person who delivered it is unimportant. Now, the passive can be used to change the whole focus of your sentence. So to understand the passive voice, you should really understand the active voice first. So here's a simple example of the active voice. The puppy chewed the toy. The puppy chewed the toy. So here we have the subject, the verb, and the object. Now most English sentences are more complicated than this, but to, to start simply, note that here the subject does the action to the object. The puppy chewed the toy. Now let's imagine that when you left the house in the morning, there was a very tempting slab of chocolate on the table. You were looking forward to having this chocolate when you got back home. But by the time you got home, it had gone. You don't know who ate it. You could probably guess, it was probably the kids. But in theory, you don't know. 
Where is the chocolate? The chocolate was eaten by somebody. So the solution here is to use the passive voice, as we don't know who ate the chocolate. Sometimes we're just more interested in the object of the sentence rather than the subject. Now you'll quite often see the passive voice used in newspapers and magazines when the journalist can't or doesn't want to say who did something. There are times when the passive voice does a better job of presenting an idea, especially in certain formal, professional or legal discussions. Other very common uses of the passive voice are in reports of crimes or incidents, when they don't know who did the crime and they are not in a legal position to disclose who did it. So his house was broken into last night. It's the break-in that is being emphasised here, not who did it. The passive voice is also commonly used in legal documents and scientific reports too, because the information has to be objective, so no subject is mentioned. The mouse was placed in the maze. The mouse was placed in the maze. The experiment is what's important here and not the scientist conducting it. And of course the passive voice is most commonly used when you just want to emphasize the action. The doer of the action is irrelevant. So some more examples of this. My visa was processed. My visa was processed. It doesn't matter who processed the visa. My shoes were made in India. My shoes were made in India. It's not important here who made them. The car was imported from Germany. The car was imported from Germany. In these examples, it's not necessary to know exactly who performed the action. OK. So now let's take a look at how the active and the passive voice is formed. The active voice is made with the subject plus the main verb plus the object. So let's look at some examples. I am writing a letter. I am writing a letter. The man must have eaten five hamburgers. The man must have eaten five hamburgers. My father built this house. My father built this house. Now, the passive voice is made with the subject, the verb to be, and the past participle. So note that the active voice object becomes the passive voice subject. In the passive, the main verb is always the past participle. Now let's look at some examples of this. A letter is being written. A letter is being written. Five hamburgers must have been eaten by the man. Five hamburgers must have been eaten by the man. This house was built by my father. This house was built by my father. So let's go back and have another look at the first example to explain the form of the passive sentence. If our active sentence is, I am writing a letter, the passive sentence is, the letter is being written. The object of the active sentence becomes the subject in the passive sentence. To make the object of the active sentence become the subject, 
we actually need to change a few things in our sentence. So how do we do that? There are a number of steps we need to take to turn the active sentence into the passive sentence. So first, we have to identify the subject, the verb and the object of the active sentence. Then, move the object to become the new subject of our sentence. Then we need to check the active sentence. What is the verb tense in the active sentence? This is really important because the passive voice exists across different tenses, so you must check what tense the active sentence is in to make your passive sentence correct. So if the sentence is in the past simple, as in, let's say, the little girl ate the chocolate, the little girl ate the chocolate, then you will need to conjugate the verb to be so that it's in the same tense as the main verb in the active sentence. We need to change the verb to be to the past simple, so it becomes was or were, depending on the new subject. Our new subject here is the chocolate, so we should choose was. The chocolate was. OK, so next we need to add the past participle of the main verb after be. So looking back at the active sentence, the main verb is eat, though it's in the past simple form. But can you think of the past participle of eat? Yes, of course, it's eaten, right? Now, finally, we need to decide what to do with the subject of your active sentence, the girl. In the passive voice, you don't have to include the thing that is doing the action. You can remove that former subject completely from your sentence if you wish. And that may be helpful if you don't know who ate the chocolate, or you simply don't want to say who ate it, or maybe you don't care, it's just not important. Having said all of that, if you do wish to add it, you can just add it to the end of the sentence with the word by, if you want to. The chocolate was eaten by the little girl. The chocolate was eaten by the little girl. Now let's look at some more examples of the passive voice. The cat was being chased by the mouse. The cat was being chased by the mouse. My bike was stolen. My bike was stolen. As you can see here, the be verb is always there and it tells us the tense. It helps to describe when something happened and it also conjugates with the subject. Oranges have been grown here for centuries. Oranges have been grown here for centuries. The flat tire was changed by Anna. The flat tire was changed by Anna. Also note the be verb is always followed by the past participle. If you wish, you can also explain who or what did the action by adding by. The flat tire was changed by Anna. Now let's look at the negative passive. We make the negative passive with the subject plus the negative of to be and the past participle. For example, this laptop was not repaired by him. This laptop was not repaired by him. Gladiator wasn't directed by Peter Smith. Gladiator wasn't directed by Peter Smith. It hasn't rained a lot lately. 
It hasn't rained a lot lately. We can also ask questions in the passive. Was this laptop repaired by him? Was this laptop repaired by him? Was Gladiator directed by Ridley Scott? Was Gladiator directed by Ridley Scott? Has it rained a lot lately? Has it rained a lot lately? Note that sometimes in spoken English, when using the passive voice, get is sometimes used in place of the verb to be. This is especially common in informal spoken English. For instance, my favorite cup got broken. My favorite cup got broken. Food can get cold, it can get hot, or it can get warm. Your bike will get stolen if you don't lock it up. Well, that's it. So now you've learned about the basics of the passive voice used in a sentence. I recommend that you watch the video a few times so that you understand it better. As always, I've prepared a downloadable PDF with some notes for you. So if that interests you, please click on the link below and you'll be able to download it right away. Anyway, I hope you like this video and don't forget to press those all important like and subscribe buttons below. See you next time. Bye.